Praise the Lord. Good morning to you, FCC, our online faith family, and to all of you who are watching from wherever you might be watching from. Good morning to you and welcome to church. Amen. Pray everybody's prospering and doing well in Jesus' name. Uh, very excited about today's message. Today we're talking about the law of restitution. And as a subtopic, pay me what you owe me. If you're connected to FCC, you know that this theme, the theme for this year is restoration, rest. Restoration. We believe that as we rest in the finished work of Christ, that this is a year where God's going to restore and replenish the body of Christ, the saints of God. Amen. Would you believe that it's possible to receive the benefits of God's promises without having to be under the burden of the law, keeping the requirements of the law? That's what happened. Jesus said, I came to fulfill or to satisfy the law. That means Jesus satisfied what God wanted where the law was concerned. So now believers, by faith in Christ, we can have the benefits of every promise without having to deal with the burden of the law. We're going to prove that today with Scripture. God has promised us in both the Old and New Covenants that we have a right to be restored, but not only restored, we have a right to receive restitution for whatever Satan has touched, whatever he's taken from us, he has to pay it back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. This is an end time revelation. We're in a season of restitution and restoration from this point until Jesus takes the church home. Things are being restored to the body of Christ. Amen. I believe this message is going to be life-changing for everyone who has ears to hear and can receive this revelation. So if you would grab your pencil and a notepad, take good notes with us today, and let's, be, let's, let's uh, allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and receive this revelation today. The law of restitution, pay me what you owe me. If you'll grab your materials, we'll be back in just a moment. Amen. Welcome back, FCC. Before we get started, I want to take a quick second to thank Pastor Samantha Kuros. Pastor Sam, uh, last weekend was Mother's Day, and Pastor Sam did just a phenomenal job. Uh, everybody's still talking about her message last week. And uh, so thank you, Pastor Sam. She is due to give birth here in a few days, and she just did a phenomenal job job of ministering to us last week. So look for that video within the next 24 to 48 hours. We want to make sure that video is available for everyone to review. Amen. Listen, today we're talking about the law of restitution. Pay me what you owe me. The first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. Uh, that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, also known as the Torah. Torah simply means teachings. All Jewish law, customs, and practices are derived from the Torah as the Torah established God's law. All laws are extension of the lawgiver's character. God's character never changes. Therefore, his law has always existed and can never change. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 6, and part A of the verse says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. So we want to look at a law that God established under the old covenant as it relates to our message today. In Exodus chapter 22 and verses 1 through 3, we're going to use the New Living Translation. The scripture reads, If someone steals an ox or sheep, and then kills or sells it, the thief must pay back five oxen for each ox stolen and four sheep for each sheep stolen. If a thief is caught in the act of breaking into a house and is struck and killed in the process, the person who killed a thief is not guilty of murder. But it if it happens in daylight, the one who killed a thief is guilty of murder. 
A thief who is caught must pay in full for everything he stole. If he cannot pay, he must be sold as a slave to pay for his theft. Amen. FCC, let's go to Luke chapter 19, verses 5 through 9. Faith family, we're reading Luke 19, verses 5 through 9. I'm using a New Living Translation. The scripture reads, when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to the house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be a guest of the notorious sinner, they grumbled. Verse number eight, meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. Amen, FCC, just flow with me. We're, we're laying some foundation for our message today. Today we're talking about the law of restitution. Pay me what you owe me. Just flow with me for just a moment as we lay this foundation. And all of these scriptures will make sense in just a second. Let's now go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 17. FCC, we're reading Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17, using a New King James Version. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. FCC, this is very important. Let's look at what Jesus said he came to do. I came to fulfill the law. This word fulfill is the word pleoro, pleoro, and it means to render full. It means to render perfect. It means to bring to pass, to ratify or accomplish, to cause God's will as made known in the law to be obeyed as it should be, and God's promises given through the prophets to receive fulfillment. FCC, if you don't mind, I want to read that definition one more time. It means to cause God's will as made known by the law to be obeyed as it should be, and God's promises given through the prophets to receive fulfillment. That's what Jesus came to do. Jesus came to ratify, to satisfy the law. Church, this is so important that we get this because it's got so many people tripped up. If Jesus has satisfied the law, then that means the law has been taken care of. It's been fulfilled. It's been So it's no longer, you don't have to do it anymore because it's been fulfilled. Let's see if we can exegete that with scripture. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 14. Faith family, we're reading Colossians chapter 2, verse number 14, using a New King James Version. The scripture reads, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he, Jesus, has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. What is the scripture talking about? Jesus has taken the handwriting, the law, the written requirements have been taken out of the way. Amen. Can you say amen? Let's go back one chapter to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. Faith family, we're in Colossians chapter 1, verse number 20. I'm going to use a New Living Translation for this verse. It reads, for all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes, and through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Listen, what we just read, the religious mind has trouble understanding and receiving the revelation that the Torah has been completely fulfilled and therefore taken out of the way. And that because of Jesus, we now have access to every promise, whether it's in the old or the new, every promise of God by faith in the finished work 
of Jesus Christ. And once again, FCC, this means that any promise you can find, whether under the old covenant or the new, the believer now has full access to this promise by faith in what Jesus has done for us. Listen, I just want to say to you that if 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 you're with someone who's trying to put you back up under the old covenant, when we clearly have a new covenant that was ratified on the cross, all I can say to you is run, Forrest, run. You, you need to get away quickly because Jesus has fulfilled the, the, the requirements of the old covenant, and we now are under the new covenant as spoken by Jesus himself. God's law established that if a thief stole one ox, he had to repay five. Now, that was law under the old covenant. It was not negotiable. It was the law at that time. This law reflected God's character, and, and God hasn't changed. If God's standard under the old was five ox for one stolen, how much better is it under the new covenant? Let's see if we can find out. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse number 6. We're almost done. Amen. FCC, we're reading Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 6. I'm going to use the New Living Translation. The scripture reads, Now Jesus, our high priest, has been given a ministry that is far superior to the old covenant or the old priesthood, for he is the one who mediates for us a far better FCC, if you would say far better, a far better covenant with God based on better promises. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. FCC, listen, that means if under the old covenant, you got five oxen for one stolen, it's even better under the new covenant. Amen. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22 Hebrews 9, verse 15, Hebrews 12, verse 24, and many other scriptures all confirm that the blood of Jesus has now ratified the new covenant for us and that every promise of the old is now even better. Amen. So how is it better? I'll tell you one way it's better. In Galatians chapter 3, in verse number 13, the scripture says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Isn't that wonderful? Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Listen, don't you allow anyone to put you back up under the law and its bondage with all of its curses. Do you know what happened if you broke the law under the old covenant? The curse came because you broke the law. Well, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And this means that we now get the promises without being up under the bondage the legalism of the law, because Christ took care of that for us. So this means that whatever promise you can find in the scriptures, whether in the old or the new, we have a right, we have a legal right to that promise through Jesus Christ. Amen. If Satan has taken anything from you, he has to pay it back double. In the, under the old covenant, if they stole one ox, they had to pay back at least five. Satan knows you at least five. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, there are certain revelations that God does not allow to flow, uh, that, that he doesn't release until the appointed time has come. Well, I'm telling you as a minister of the Lord, as a prophet of God, that the time of restoration for the church, for the body of Christ has come. Amen. I'm going to close now, and I want to close with Acts chapter 3, and verse 21. Acts chapter 3 and verse 21. Amen, FCC. I pray you're receiving this revelation. I want to close with Acts chapter 3, verses 17 through 21. I'm going to use three different translations. I want to start with the New Living. I want to set a quick backdrop. Jesus has given his disciples instructions. He says, I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to don't leave until the promise of the Spirit has come. They go to the upper room. The Holy Spirit shows up on the day of Pentecost. They're all filled with the Spirit of God. The evidence of tongues is present. And now they have been released. And the New Testament church, the church is born. 
And now Peter is preaching the gospel under the power of the Holy Ghost, under the power of the Spirit of God. And that's where we are in Acts chapter 3, verse 17 through 21. The first translation, New Living says, friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send Jesus, send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. Watch this church. For he, Jesus, must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Amen. FCC, listen, I've read that scripture many times, but God illuminated this scripture for me over the last few weeks, and he showed me that there is a powerful revelation in this scripture. Peter says, go repent for what you did, and God will forgive you. He'll wipe your sins away, and you will receive again your Messiah that's been appointed to you, but right now he's in heaven. And he has to remain in heaven until everything is restored. Glory to Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The scripture literally says he can't come yet until restoration takes place. Boy, I tell you, I'm trying to hold my seat down. Listen, let's look at this again in the message translation. I don't use the message a whole lot, but let's look, let's look at Acts chapter 3, verses 19 through 21 using the message translation. FCC, Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 21, using the Message Bible reads, Now it's time to change your ways. Turn to face God so he can wipe away your sins. Pour out showers of blessings to refresh you and send you the Messiah he prepared for you, namely Jesus. For the time being, he, Jesus, must remain out of sight in heaven until everything is restored to order again, just the way God, through the preaching of his holy prophets of old, said it would be. Here we are again, another translation of CC. The apostle Peter says, right now Jesus has to remain out of sight. He's remaining out of sight until everything is restored. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more translation. Let's look at the King James Version. Let's go to Acts chapter 3, verse 21, using the King James Version. FCC, we're in Acts chapter 3, verse 21, using the King James Version. The scripture reads, Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world Begin. We've used three translations, and all of them are speaking the same. Listen, for those who believe that this is restitution is going to happen in the great by and by, there will be no need for restitution once we're in heaven. We will be in heaven with Jesus. This restitution is talking about here on earth. Listen, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, the scriptures read, Jesus said, I'm going to present to myself a glorious church. That word glorious, I've taught on this before, is the word endoxos. And this word means a splendid church, a healthy church, a wealthy church, a prosperous church. Listen, I know that right now, if you look at the scene right now, it looks like the church is losing and the church is uh, you know, on the bottom end. But I want you to buckle up because somehow between now and the rapture, the church is going to become strong. The church is going to be wealthy. It's going to be well. It's going to be a splendid church. God's not coming back for a limping, broke, busted, and disgusted church. He's coming back for a glorious church. The time of restoration, restitution of all things has begun. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. We're in a season, and this is an end time revelation. FCC and for our online partners, we gave an instruction. The word restitution is the word apocatastasis. Apocatastasis. And this word means 
to return to its former state, to make it better than it was before. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, we gave an instruction. I gave an instruction to all of our members. Write down three things that you want God to restore. That you know Satan has taken from you. That Satan robbed you of. It doesn't matter how that. Maybe it was your ignorance. Maybe it was abuse of some kind. Maybe it was your fault even. Maybe you participated it doesn't matter. Satan has no right to touch anything that belongs to a believer. When you make a mistake, that's between you and God. Satan has no right to interfere in the life of a believer. So if he touched it, he now must repay. He must restore. Satan must give me at least five oxen for the one he stole. Pay me what you owe me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So listen, I want you to write down at least three things. For those in our online faith family, listen, you can go to our website, memphisfaith.com. Go to the contact screen. And if you want to submit those, we're praying over these requests from now until the end of the year. We're declaring this word, this prophetic word over our list from now until the end of the year. And we believe by the word of the Lord that we're going to begin to see restoration flow like a river. It's going to begin to flow in this church and for those who are connected to FCC. We believe that restitution has been released over the body of Christ, particularly this body. Amen. What God wants us to do is to know where we are in time, where we are on his prophetic time clock, and he wants us to get in step with where he is, and he wants us to release our faith. Amen. I'm releasing my faith. I want everything that Satan ever touched in my life, I want it restored. I want full restitution for everything Satan has ever stolen from me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, FCC. Listen, sometimes the power of God uh, is so tangible as I release these words that God gives me to speak uh, to anyone who has ears to hear. And that's what's happened today. I've had to calm myself down. I want to give these instructions one more time for those who might be flowing along with us online. You can go to our uh, website, messagefaith.com. Go to the contact page and you can submit the three things that you're believing God to restore. And we're going to release our faith on those for the remainder of this year. And that restoration we believe is gonna to begin to flow. It might show up in the next two months, it might show in the next six months, but from now till Jesus takes the church out of the earth, we're in a period of restitution and restoration. Expect to see a glorious church because God said so in Jesus' name, amen. Listen, God told us in Joel chapter two, I'm even going to restore the years to you that the canker worm, the pommel worm, they have been stolen from you. I'm going to restore years to your life in Jesus name. Amen. That's enough. Listen, there's a few announcements. Uh, I'm just going to, uh, if you'll pay attention to the end of the screen uh, as, as the credits here as we leave, uh, please pay attention to those announcements and we'll be back. I look forward to being back with you next broadcast. There are several broadcasts that are going to be coming out here in the next in this next couple of weeks. We've got some catching up to do. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for receiving this revelation, the law of restitution. Tell the devil, pay me what you owe me. Amen. Have a good week in the Lord. We'll see you next week. Oops.